Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your Evelyn host Shorty, and today we are reviewing The Right Way Up. No one, no one. Um, it's an interesting one because I honestly wasn't going to order any of it. Um, I wasn't hearing much buzz about it, but a couple of my regular customers were like, yeah, cool, I'll check it out, so I added it, and I got a spare. Just one. Literally, this is the only spare copy in the shop. Because sometimes, as a small store, I can't afford to really, really go to town on comic books where nobody's really been talking them up much. But in this particular instance, I feel like I may have missed the boat somewhat. Um, I feel like more people should be talking about it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. There's a caveat to that, but there's a lot to talk about, so I'm going to get right into it. First off, artwork, uh, particularly about the colouring and the layouts. Um, the colouring starts off fairly um, thin and weak, but that works perfectly well for what they're doing. Um, uh, when you do get sequences where it needs depth and action, it comes to life. There's a fantastic sequence where it's a reporter uh, speaking to a, a police officer outside of a crime scene, and it's at night with the red and blue flashing lights on top of the emergency service vehicles, and honestly, it looks amazing. The the depth of colour and how they use the sh light and the shading um, and the shadows where they are cast is just is genuinely spectacular. Uh, there's also a really nice uh, fight sequence where it's kind of limited in its action, but what is there is superb. It genuinely feels alive. It's dynamic and uh, honestly... While well, capturing just a single moment in time also shows movement. It's really, really good. Uh, what I do like about it more than any of those, though, is layouts, because I like this kind of thing. Um, and for the most part, um, it does a variation on the nine-panel grid. Basically, imagine an imaginary nine panels, but then occasionally move sections of guttering to uh, have slightly larger panels. That's what we're dealing with here. It does this really nicely. Um, it, the only thing I really prefer is every once in a while you'll get the same kind of style, but they'll leave all the guttering in, and then you just kind of figure out where the artwork carries on and bleeds over from panel to panel. It doesn't do that, but I think it makes sense not to do it because it's a far more realistic style. It's it's not a stylistic choice of we're doing a comic book form thing here. It feels more like it's just we're using this form to tell a story. And it is a down-to-earth realistic story. This isn't superheroes. Um, it isn't anything over the top. Yes, there is a costume vigilante, but it doesn't even feel in the way of like Batman is a superhero without superpowers. It feels very, very down-to-earth. Uh, and now we've talked about the artwork, let's talk about what's going on in this comic book. Uh, because we drop into it halfway through a story, in fact, quite far into the story, uh, there was um, a, an online vigilante uh, hacktivist called No One, um, and they did a bunch of data drops on rich, powerful people who have been corrupted or were just criminals and doing terrible things or taking advantage of poor people. Basically, all the kind of vigilante stuff that I'm in favour of rather than just beating up poor people because the system wants them to stay poor. Very much in my, uh, very much in my wheelhouse here. Love that concept from the start. But then we have the kind of inevitable fallout from this of um, somebody basically sees these people um, and finds out everything they've done and goes and murders them. Um, and the little twist in the tale here is it's the son of somebody who's very hype in the police department. Um, and when they are arrested, uh, after the activist actually puts on their costume and goes and prevents murders, uh, other people start trying to do copycats, and some of them succeed, but the uh, hacktivist um, majority, no one stops some of them. Um, and this is a great little story in of itself. It's kind of complicated by the fact that we know some of what's happened, we don't know everything, um, and... We don't even know who the uh, hacktivist vigilante is, we don't know what the, uh, the um, assassin is, or we know several of them are actually. Um, and there's also a story about the journalists working on the story. Um, and here we get to the bit where I'm going to say something, and it's probably going to affect people's thoughts on this comic book in one way or another. And I want to make sure they stick around because there is a caveat at the end of it, but this is the closest I've ever come to reading a comic book which captures an awful lot of the essence of why I love the TV show, The Wire. Yes, I know there's probably some fans of The Wire out now going, wait, you can't do that, The Wire is amazing, it's literally one of the best TV shows ever. And yes, I agree, it's really hard to compare things to it. Um, the Wire is a, a show which I absolutely binged when I discovered it uh, many, many years ago, years after it came out. And it was spectacular, and some of the best moments in TV history for me are in that show. For me to compare a comic book to it, because of... It's shifting narrative, it's change of point of view, uh, the fact that it is uh, looking at things um, without any kind of, seemingly no intent to have a good guy or a bad guy, just have people doing things, it's exactly what I get from The Wire. And now we get the caveat. Now we get the bit where I'm just like, yes, I'm not going to have people coming and say, you can't simply say this, you know, the best TV series in the world by several degrees is the same as this comic book. No, unfortunately it isn't. The comic book doesn't quite have the depth just yet. Very different thing between the first episode of a TV show and the first issue of a comic book. More happens in an hour-long TV show than this comic book. Uh, we get more character depth when we have the time to focus on them all. In this, even though there's less characters, and we do get a certain sense of who they are, there's little bits of fantastic non-dialogue uh, communication. Um, it is a, 
a place in the story where the world is kind of being beaten down by it because we're coming halfway through. We see that on people's faces. We are getting a build up to who they are, but we're not quite there yet. The first issue isn't the same as the first episode, but I'd love to say it's got the style of it. It's got enough of it that makes me want to come back and carry on reading it. I can only hope it lives up to it, but I for one think it could do. I think it could be fantastic. And I'm really annoyed I didn't order more copies of it because I want to sell it to everyone. Uh, that's it for me today though. I've got more to review later on in the week, so make sure you do the like, subscribe, um, do the chanting circle, uh, summon the spirits, that kind of thing, and that way you won't miss out on anything. It's awesome. Uh, until I see you again though, look after each other everyone. Stay safe. Bye!